So let's start with the brief introduction. Um, maybe no. Okay. I decided to use a sort of a comical approach to heritage. So I was quoting Monty Python by rephrasing what the Romans have ever done for us, what heritage has ever done for us. So basically, I hope we will all agree that heritage is offering us raw and flexible resources. Some people may say they are renewable, some others may say they are sustainable, but we still have a resource that can be used in an uh, appropriate manner. And that creates what we're going to look at today, the heritage industry and how we can manage it. And from the heritage industry, we will be able to create opportunities and perspectives. So opportunities are basically conservation in the long run and job opportunities for the people working in our sector, but also benefits for the population living around the sites or museums, as well as uh, local businesses. Now, this is just to give two, point, two examples what, where we should look at when we think about management. So we have a, a famous site in England, iconic site, Stonehenge. It didn't used to be like this. They used to be visited by only a few thousand people in the 70s, but then her English heritage stepped in and the number of visitors skyrocketed to 1.6 million a couple of years ago. And now you've been charged between 15 to 20 pounds to enter the site, and if you want a private visit, you need to go there at five o'clock in the morning and pay 50 to 75 pounds. And you can only have access for like 45 minutes and there will be a guard with you. Um, Pompeii is another good example of how visitors are really consuming a site, but also endangering the site at the same time, because if you imagine that at some point there were only 10,000 people visiting, and now every year we got 2.5 million visitors, site erosion is the first problem to be addressed in that site. Then we have many organizations, and that's the title of the session, controlling sites, museums, historical buildings, and all of them could be controlled either by the state, by um, uh, a union between state and private companies, charities, and so on and so forth. They all have uh, issues and they all have uh, uh, good, uh, good aspects. One of the main issues of uh, state-controlled uh, sites are the network, which is effective, but it's not always used appropriately. And then human resources are always stretched to the limit. Financial resources, I'm just touching points that anyone can make, even a five years old child can assume the same things. For independent ones, they have similar problems, but one of the most important is that they tend to be re uh, reasonably new developed, except for a few cases like National Trust in England that was uh, created in 1895. For instance, we have a similar National Trust in Italy, but it was created only in 1975, so almost 180 uh, years later. There are also a lot, quite a few advantages, which are basically unlimited financial resources in theory for the state, because a state should not go bankrupt, event, but we had cases of that as well. We have unlimited human resources because if you think of how many people work for the Ministry of Culture in every country, you can definitely pull a lot of human resources from every person that is working in that ministry. You just need to make sure that they are connected and easy to reach out. And the same works for the independent ones. And one of the good points is that they have a really large pool of human resources available and they change quite often. So new ideas keep coming in independent institutions because there is a large turnover of staff. And then before we start with the first one, I just wanted to propose this analogy with heritage as a car. Now, heritage is the main resource, so I lost the car now, there it is. But we can have a beautiful car, Ferrari or Lamborghini, but if we don't have the petrol, the fuel, which is the visitor, doesn't go anywhere. If we don't know where to go, the motorway, which is the museum and the site, again, we're completely missing the point. If we don't have a conservation program, the person that is going to take care of that car, the mechanic, again, there will be a problem. And if we're missing the management organization, again, we will not have 
a vision where we head into with heritage and what we want to do with heritage. So the question for today is to find out who could be the ideal infrastructure, organization, charity, whatever, that can be combining all these different <coughs> aspects together to make a manage management of heritage viable and feasible. So that was the introduction.